Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to yet another one of my Deathmatch Civilization overviews. If you've been watching my videos recently, you will probably have noticed a large emphasis on elephant units, and that is because I've been preparing for this Deathmatch Civilization overview. And today, I am going to be looking at the Persians. As per usual, if you want to have some say into what civilization I will do next, please vote on the poll in the top right hand corner of the video. And whatever you do, please do not vote for the Vikings. Please spare me the pain. Anyways, let's jump right into this video. The Persians are a very fun civilization because they have lots of beefy units that work really well in combination with each other. So let's start by looking at their bonuses to see how these bonuses combine. The first bonus is that they start with plus 50 wood and food at the beginning of a game. In a random match game, this is a pretty nice bonus, but in a deathmatch game, I don't think it's too relevant. The next bonus is that the town center and the dock have twice the HP. Now, in a deathmatch game for the town center, this is going to be very important if your opponent decides to rush you, because oftentimes, if you get double teamed at the start of a deathmatch game, you might lose your town center, and if you lose your first town center within the first five minutes, it's going to be game over most likely. However, if you can hold on for just a little bit longer, your allies can oftentimes bail you out, and what this means is that this allows the Persians' early defenses to be a lot stronger. Also, when you combine this with the fact that the Persians already have masonry and architecture, this gives them a town center that has 5,808 HP. Compared to a town center that has no upgrades, that has 2,400 HP, you can see that this is quite a lot. Just in case you were wondering, masonry and architecture give a town center an extra 504 HP, and the Byzantines have 3,360 HP. These are both nice additions to the original HP, but the Persian bonus is far stronger. A Persian dock has 4,356 HP, while an Aztec one that has no upgrades only has 1,800. The Goths have 2,178 HP, and the Byzantines have 2,520 HP. And this just again shows you that the Persians have extra beefy docks. Now, the next part of this bonus is that both of these buildings work 10%, 15%, and 20% faster in the Imperial Age. This is staggered up through the ages. Now, this does have some very interesting implications for a deathmatch game. First, when looking at the town center, normal villagers are built in 25 seconds. However, Persian villagers are built in 21 seconds, which means for another civilization, when you have about 4 villagers, if you're the Persians, you would have about 5. I think that this is a solid economy bonus because it allows you to create your economy a lot faster, especially when you have several town centers. When looking at the speed increase this gives the dock, you have to keep in mind that the Persians do not have shipwright. Shipwright allows docks to work 25% faster, and it allows ships to cost 20% less wood, so they already miss out on the wood discount. For a civilization without shipwright, like the Vikings ironically, it takes them 36 seconds to create a galleon, but it takes the Persians only 30 seconds. However, on the other hand, a civilization with shipwright, such as the Chinese, only takes 23 seconds. And what this means basically is that this is a worse version of the shipwright upgrade. Moving on, their unique unit is the War Elephant. The Elite version has 620 HP with 24 attack and 4 melee armor with 7 pierce armor. You'll notice that these stats are incredibly tanky, and the reason for this is because it is incredibly slow and the elephants are very costly at 200 food and 75 gold. However, despite this very large food cost, it is still effective versus most units. The only units that really count as strong counters are halberdiers, camels, and a halb plus scorpion combination. 
Monks also work very well, because the Persians do not have heresy, and what this means is that when an elephant is converted, that elephant will actually switch sides instead of dying, which is what heresy allows units to do. In large numbers, onagers will work well, but in small numbers, they really don't work too well because the elephants can tank a whole lot of shots. When I talk about deathmatch strategy for the civilization, I'll talk about how I like to use elephants. But briefly, I think that they're a very tanky unit, and as such, they're a great meat shield which can survive a lot of punishment from archers and castles or melee units. And as such, they'll do really well at taking down buildings and surviving under pressure. I've made a separate video in which I compared the War Elephant to the Rise of the Raja Civilization's Battle Elephants, and if you want to learn more about this unit in depth, I suggest that you watch that. Their first unique technology is Mahouts, which allows the elephants to move at a faster speed. Their second unique technology, which was added in the HD expansions, is very interesting because it is boiling oil. What this does is it allows castles to do bonus damage versus rams. They technically deal 9 extra damage, however, only the first arrow in a castle volley is affected. A Spanish castle, which has all the exact same upgrades as a Persian castle, deals 5 damage per volley to a siege ram, taking 54 hits to kill that siege ram. A Persian castle, on the other hand, does 11 damage per volley, taking 25 volleys to kill. However, still keep in mind that even though a Persian castle survives one siege ram a little bit better than a Spanish castle does, neither castle can survive two siege rams. I guess what I'm trying to say is that while this bonus is nice and it is a little bit of a convenience, the reality is siege rams are still excellent counters to castles. The Persian team bonus is that paladins and the entire knight line deal plus two damage versus archers. Now, I tried to test this in the scenario editor, but I had some very wonky results. Both a Spanish paladin and a Persian paladin took three hits to kill an arbalest. However, the Persian paladin dealt 19 damage per shot. And this didn't make sense because the math didn't line up. So I made a real game to test this, and I found that a Persian paladin did 17 damage per hit versus an arbalest, and a Spanish paladin did 15, which is what we would expect. For the hand cannoneer, it should also be 3 hits to kill for both paladins, but I couldn't test it because I couldn't figure out how to get the AI to make hand cannoneers. Alright, let's see. Look, there's an archery range! Is he gonna make hand cannoneer? No! Why is he making skirmishers? This doesn't make sense. He's Spanish. He needs to be making hand cannoneers. I made infantry just to get him to make hand cannoneers. Uh, I can't find any. Nope, that's a conquistador. Why, can't, why are they doing this to me? Oh my gosh! Why can't he just make a hand cannon here? He just needs to make hand cannon ears. Please, just make hand cannon ears. Just make. And so, as you can tell, this bonus is kind of a modest bonus, but it's really hard to quantify to see how good it really is because for many units, it's still going to be the exact same hits to kill. And so, let's move on to talk about the Persian tech tree. So let's start by grading them for a deathmatch game. I'd say that they have below average archers because while they do miss Arbalest and Bracer, which means their skirmishers and their heavy cavalry archers are going to be weak, they still have hand cannoneers so they can at least get by. For infantry, I'd say they have below average infantry because they do have a fully upgraded halberdier, which is the most important, but they only have long swordsmen. And so I think this makes them worse than many civilizations. For their cavalry, they have fully upgraded paladins, camels, and hussars, as well as having those really awesome elite war elephants. They don't have heavy cavalry archers that are strong, because after all, they do miss Bracer, so I don't think you should make heavy cavalry archers. But aside from this, I think that they are probably a top three cavalry civilization in deathmatch. I think that their siege is average, because they do have the siege ram, heavy scorpion, and bombard cannon, but they don't have siege engineers or siege onagers. When I play as the Persians, I do make rams and scorpions just about every game. However, siege engineers is so important because it makes all their siege weapons a lot better. Their defenses are above average because they have all of the building HP technologies, including hoardings, and their town center has extra HP. 
They have fully upgraded halberdiers, camels, and hand cannoneers, which means they have a wide variety of counter options. On the downside, they don't have treadmill crane, bombard tower, fortified walls, or siege engineers, and their towers are pretty weak, but I think that the building HP bonus for the town center definitely makes up for it. And finally, their navy is below average. This is because they don't have bracer, shipwright, or treadmill crane, which makes them very slow and pretty weak against a good navy civilization. They're not quite bottom tier, because they do have fast fire ships, elite cannon galleons, and heavy demo ships, meaning they do have a wide array of options, but the reality is that they'll probably get demolished against any fast player. The Persian monks are missing a good deal of technologies, and the most important of which is heresy, which means their elephants will be converted instead of dying. For their economy, it is looking pretty nice though, because they don't miss any technologies, and they have that very important villager creation speed bonus. And so that we have a pretty good knowledge of the Persian tech tree in mind, we can finally look at deathmatch strategy. Now when you look at deathmatch strategy, you need to think about what you want your army to be composed of. I would suggest for the Persians to have an elephant based army because the elephants are their unique unit which are very population efficient versus a wide variety of units. However, you need to keep in mind that it's going to take a long time to get these elephants because you have to build castles for them and because they're very expensive, so you're going to have to spend quite a lot of time in building up your economy. This leads me to think that there are really two different strategies you can go for as the Persians in a deathmatch game. The first strategy, which we will call an aggressive start, probably aligns a lot more with the conventional wisdom of deathmatch than the other strategy does. For this first strategy, what you'll probably do is you'll open with stables and barrackses in order to create paladins and halberdiers in order to rush your opponent. You'll continue to raid your opponent in order to prevent them from gaining a large army, and in order to give yourself map control. You'll do this with relatively small yet effective forces. You'll then transition into making your eco pretty soon, and eventually go into making siege units and elephants. This is probably the most common type of start in a pro deathmatch game. However, it's not my preferred choice for the Persians. The reason for this is because they miss treadmill claim, and as such they build their buildings a little bit slower. In other words, there are other civilizations that can do this start much better. I might do this as a pocket player to help my allies, or if the population limit is 200 and I really feel like I absolutely have to be aggressive, However, I personally prefer to do what we'll call a defensive start. For this strategy, what you'll do is you'll open by clumping. Now clumping is a start in deathmatch, in which you place your buildings in such a way so that way your opponent cannot get inside your base. You'll basically close all entrances. As the Persians, I like to clump with castles and with stables, because I want to get my powerful units out as fast as I can. I'll use my stables to create paladins or camels in order to raid my opponent early, but I'll be very sure not to overextend myself or to waste units. Instead of putting all my resources into attacking my opponents early, what I'll oftentimes do is I'll create town centers and siege workshops and I'll mass units around my base. Now please be aware that this does yield early map control to your opponent, which you normally do not want to do. However, the large army that you're going to have massed up is going to be extremely powerful, and in the games I have played, it has definitely been worth it. What you'll want your army to be composed of will be a lot of elephants, oftentimes camels, rams, and scorpions. Once I start to attack my opponent with a very large army, I'll add in more siege weapons, and then I'll replace the camels with halberdiers. This start is a little bit risky because it gives the opponent a chance to establish themselves, but more often than not, their army will be a lot weaker than your army. Think about it this way. If you have 30 elephants going across to your opponents, what are they going to try to counter it with? They might try to counter it with 40 camels or with 40 halberdiers, but you fortunately have the correct counters to those units out. And even if they might have a little bit more units, your units are going to be far more powerful. 
This strategy with the clump start works really well when you play as a flank player because you'll be able to defend your opponent's early rushes. The defensive start strategy also works well as a pocket player because you won't be pressured early. It also works really well in 300 population limit games where you can make a really large economy to fill your most expensive units. Now, unlike some civilizations, when I play as the Persians, I don't really change my army composition that much in order to match my opponent's army composition. The reason for this is because this composition covers all of its weaknesses very well. Instead, I'll just add in more of the appropriate units. So, for example, versus infantry, I will have a much heavier emphasis on scorpions, but a much lighter emphasis on cavalry. Versus siege, it'll be the other way around. Now, you might be wondering, how do you counter this very strong death ball? Well, the first way you can counter it is obviously by never letting them get a death ball. In other words, rush them and rush them good. Don't give up on pushing pressure against the Persians. Now, of course, don't waste units, but make sure that you're always applying pressure and you're not allowing them to mass up a large arm. However, if they do get a Persian death ball, you are in big trouble. I would say make a lot and a lot of monks, so that way you can convert these elephants. Oftentimes, Persian players don't really expect you to go for monks in a deathmatch game because they are so hard to micro. However, it really is worth it. However, you're still going to need to make a bunch of other units to counter the other units that the Persians have. Ironically, the Halberdier and Scorpion combo, which Persians utilize themselves, is actually pretty good versus Persians because heavy Scorpions deal bonus damage versus Elephants, and remember if your opponent is trying to mass up units, the Scorpion is the unit to use. Also, if you have a very strong Siege Onager civilization, you can make a lot of these, but be careful not to lose these because your Siege Onagers are much more fragile than your opponent's units. Other than that, I, that's all I can really tell you about countering the Persians. They are an extremely difficult civilization to counter once they have their large army up. So the secret is to rush them early and don't let them mass up their army. I think that this sums up my thoughts about the Persians very well. They don't have treadmill crane, and unlike all the other rush civilizations, they don't really have any creation speed bonuses. This makes them a little awkward in the early game, because while they do have paladins and camels, they can't really use them to their fullest potential. Instead, the Persians, if they want to use their fullest potential, they need to wait and be patient and create a huge and awesome army. I think that the power of their army is probably why they're one of my favorite civilizations, after maybe the Goths and the Mongols. I really want to spend more time to talk about the specifics of this army, but I think that I don't have time, and once you play them several times in a deathmatch game, you'll get the picture pretty easily. See you later, have fun.